So hello and welcome to another little update on our building and today we're going to carry on working on roofs. So you saw me do this one last time and I've added the cove, um, ridge tiles and the guttering. The guttering will show you a bit later but I will just show you the um, ridge tiles now. So I like a, comp a contrast so I'm using the red tile uh, ridge tiles to give me a little contrast. Do you need to make sure you cut slightly on the printed side, otherwise you end up with a white line. Um, we're just going to check the length of these. Yep, that's put, so we just cut this off here. So there we go. So I know some of this gets a little bit tedious when we're doing it because um, I'm not necessarily talking but I am trying to concentrate and uh, I do like to concentrate. So there we go, nice and simple, right length and all we're going to do is rather than score it with a knife, put it on the sharp edge of a ruler, put it on the sharp edge of a ruler and just fold it along there. And then that should just fold in half like that. Makes a little V. Clear my scrap away from earlier, which I meant to do. Sorry, I've got my glue's a little gunked up because I was using it earlier. And obviously the big advantage of PVA is it dries clear. And then that just goes on the top there. I've got a little bit more glue than I would like. So I'll just wipe some of that off. There we go. And then that gives us our ridge tile. It's a little bit long, so we just trim it. And then that fits very nicely. So we'll tidy that up a bit later, but you get the idea. So that's a ridge tile done. So now what we're going to do is work on this uh, shape through here, which is obviously a little bit more complicated um, because there's two or three things got to go on here. So oh, one I think I keep mentioning the book I've been getting a lot of ideas from is this one, uh, Miniature Building Construction by uh, John H. Ahern, who many people know did, I think it was uh, Madder Valley, which is now at Pendon. This was written in the very early 1950s, but huge amounts of it are still very relevant. Uh, it's one of the best books I've ever seen on it. Um, if you happen to see a copy of this or anything by um, Mr. Ahern, then I would look out for it. Very, very good book. So we're going to measure across here which is going to be, now I tend to do it on the model, not off the plan. Um, so that's 10 and a half centimetres. And then we're going to um, work it out from there. And then we know that this way, these are, I think, um, 35, so I want that to be about 40, 35 and 40. So that's 35 and 40. And that's going to be offset. You'll see why uh, later on. So we're going to mark this out um, to the measurements I've just taken. Sorry for the slight lot of lack of continuity there. Douglas is trying to fix a loco and just came in and asked me some questions. Right. So... And this is going to be a little bit trial and error, this, um, because we've also got to work out some distances. Um, so we'll have to see how this goes. So this, this piece here is quite difficult to get a ruler in, so I'm just going to mark it and then measure it off. Yeah, they're about 52, 53. And it should be in the middle. So we're going to take a little bit of stab in the dark here now and do it this way. So 
So that will give us, hopefully, what I'm looking for, which is the slope down. No. Let's try it and see. We might end up doing this twice. Um, I've not done one of these before. It's an interesting one we get with this. We get some people saying to us, you know, it's a bit, um, why don't you practice first or whatever? And then sometimes I think, well, it's better to show that, you know, this is how you learn. This is how we learn to do things. So sometimes it's probably a good idea to say, well, look, this is how we're trying to learn it uh, by doing it as we go along and perhaps getting it wrong and then getting it right the second or the third time. And that's how we've learned to do it. Um, so hopefully, even if this doesn't work, we know then how not to do it and then we can get it right next time. And then you can learn how to do the same thing if you're trying to do your own buildings. However, <laughs> it fits first time. <laughs> How about that? So that's just taking some basic measurements. Um, it's a little bit off actually. It's fine there. Nearly, I'd say that nearly fitted first time. It's the wrong way around anyway. So, now you see that's frustrating. Oh no, hang on, hang on. Yeah, so we got that side right and it's this side that's gone wrong. So we got half of it is spot on and this one's got to come out quite a bit more so this has got this side's got to be longer about plus three um, that's got to go that way by about two and that way by about four so what we'll do now we'll use this as a template because it's half right so I'm going to do is mark this one out because that bit fits really rather nicely and then we know that this has got to come out to about here. So what I'm actually going to do is do it around there. And then we know, however, that this has got to come out a bit further. Like that. Uh, that one's got to go out another four from there to make that fit. there and this one's got to come out about three and then we'll try this one and we'll see how this works what I should have done as well of course is rather than using this good card was used a piece of thin cereal packet card till we got it right which would have been a better better system so this is take two this is the second piece but, you know, cardboard didn't cost us anything, so it's not a big issue. Try and get it the right way round this time. And actually this time, that's pretty good. The next thing we've got to do now on this is the chimneys. And to do the chimneys, we do need to have a little look at our plan and work out where the chimneys are going to come. And it's halfway across the joint here. Now I've done a pre little measurement here, so I know that it's got to be eight millimeters down each side of the roof. So effectively, the chimneys have got to come with their middles, I've lost my pencil, with their middles through that line of where the ends are. So I'm just gonna check those lines and they're absolutely spot on. And we know they've got to come down eight mil on each to give us the right size hole. So these then have got to be cut out. Now you can do it the other way, which is make the chimneys separate and then um, glue them onto the roof. Um, I personally struggle to get a nice neat finish and reading um, David Hearn's book there he's will show you when we come to do the chimneys um, I think I've got a better way of doing it a bit more like Metcalf do it on theirs
time for a new knife blade soon, I think. Right, there we go. So we've now got our pattern here. So exactly the same as before. I'm gonna stick out a roofing material on. So we're gonna get our glue stick. Cover all over. Like this. There we go. So you've seen me do this before, but I guess there's no harm in a bit of repetition. Right, so there we have our roof. There we go. And that's going to sit in there. That way round. So what I'm going to just show you now is guttering. So I used to fiddle around trying to get gutters on and it was reading that book that I realised I was doing it the wrong way. So we measure what we want here, which is, we're going to do about 50. We get a piece of this. This is just thick black card. Um, don't worry about measuring too much here because you'll see the point. Now I used to try and get these tiny little two millimeter by three millimeter um, grooves of black stuck to the underneath to look as gutters. So what I've done is scored a line there and I'm just going to fold that back on itself so that you've got, let's try and get it on the camera. <laughs> it's very difficult to do this, it's like a mirror image. So you can see what we've got there, um, like a little thick groove. Cut the corners off so they don't show. And all we're gonna do when I find the right bit of roof again, because I haven't marked this, and when I do mark it then I'll know. What's that edge? What we're gonna do here is glue it like that, okay? And then on the other side, we've got what looks like a gutter. And having spent years fiddling doing that, I can't believe reading that book that I'd missed something so simple and obvious. Um, so I'm, I'm quite chuffed with that, <laughs> if I'm honest. Right, so now we're gonna glue this one on. This will be a little bit more fiddly. Somebody did say to me, wouldn't it just be easier to build a kit? And I suppose the answer is yes, it would be easier. But this way I get the fun of designing it. Um, I get exactly what I want. Um, and of course this will have cost me, I don't know, a couple of quid. Um, even if I'd bought the brick paper new, it would certainly have cost me about six pound. So I think that's a good, a good investment. And we just stick that then on and we'll sit and hold that. And then we've got a little bit of a tear in our brick paper there so we can fix that. So the only problem I've found now is obviously you have got to sit here for quite a while holding this um, till it glues. But that then will be the roof on. Now these seams don't worry about too much because we'll neaten them up. I'll show you how we'll neaten those later. So by the time it's all done, it will actually look quite good. So there we go, that's um, how to do roofs, uh, gutterings and so on, um, and how to work out, that's obviously a more complicated bit of roof. And next time we'll do chimneys um, and we'll finish off some of the other little detail pieces that we've got to do. So as always, thank you very much for watching uh, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Hi, thanks for watching the video and for the nice comments. Uh, click on the left for a previous video in this series. Click on the right for another video you might enjoy. And please don't forget to click to subscribe, like, comment, etc. Thanks again.